He hasn't been the Leafs goalie for- Yeah, but the wound is still fresh. It's still fresh. It's like it happened yesterday. Okay, okay, fair, fair. He stole my jobs. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits. Left Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How much more's gonna bet after watching that? I'm quite hyped. <laughs> With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Four to one over the San Jose Sharks and no victory puppies today because Iggy is asleep because I had dinner eight hours ago, the California road trip, my God. But it's okay, Sunday's game, and I did check, it's actually Sunday, is in Anaheim, but it's at eight. But we're talking about all these numbers, these silly numbers, these useless numbers, you wanna see a good one. The Maple Leafs with their sixth road victory earned their 11th win in the month of November the most in any calendar month in franchise history, and Mark Masters just reiterating what you just heard, November 2021, the winningest month in Maple Leafs history. Exactly the November I predicted after watching October. Seriously, this thing was a hot streak and hooray, it's always good to compile points, stockpile points at the beginning of the season, but Ah, uh, Leafs Nation, I've been getting a lot of tweets. I've been getting a lot of tweets, a lot of texts, a lot of messages on all kinds of platforms, carrier pigeons from Leafs fans, and a lot of them are saying the same thing. Ah, uh, why is this team making me believe again? That's the thing about the Leafs. I got some tweets that we'll get to later, and one is from a Canucks fan talking about how hard he has it. Losing isn't the worst thing. You want to know what the worst thing is? Hope. And all my hopes are sky high for this, and speaking of sky high, Joseph Wolf's save percentage. Joseph Wolf threw his first three NHL starts, 3-0-0, that's good. 1.67 goals against average. I wish, I wish that was different. A 9-3-9 save percentage and one shutout. Pretty good first impression. Now, yes, Joseph Wolf did get a shutout in his last start. That was that game against the Islanders. But like I said in that video, he had a pretty easy night. The Leafs played really well in front of him. And the Leafs actually did a fine job against the San Jose Sharks. Not mind-blowing, especially at moments in the third. Third. But this to me, even though he's only played in three games and one of them was a shutout, this to me was Joseph Wool's best game yet by far. I think it was way more impressive than the shutout win because I wasn't left with the urge to praise the team. They did fine, they deserve praise, but Wool was spectacular. Because the goalie is really tested when things get hairy. Things never really got hairy in the Islanders game. In this game, oh, things got hairy. But Joseph Wolf found the solution for that. No, not that one, Adam Wild. Stop it! Leave us alone! Not here! Not in this house! You leave that filth on the podcast channel! STPN. Go subscribe. Anyway, those stats are big, so I wanted to get to those before we talk about the game, which is pretty simple, so we won't spend a ton of time on it, famous last word, and then I'll get to questions. First, early in the game, we already talked about Joseph Wall in the Leaf Net, in the Sharks Net, James Reimer. I am unwell. But in my favorite, and then what happened exchange of the night, here's Kevin Kurz, a local reporter for the San Jose Sharks. I'm filing a story about James Reimer after tonight's game, so if he allows three goals in the first five minutes, you know who to blame. Close, it was two, and it was five minutes and 16 seconds. Just 32 seconds into this game, because we're all, Leaf fans were programmed the same way. Things are going well. They're winning a lot of games, which means what? That they're really good? Ah, uh, no, no, no. That they're really good? No, we're not looking for that one. Anyone? 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 That that they're due to lose, very good. Always get it on the second attempt, look at you. William Nylander doesn't care. He's in California right now. He came to do two things. Work on his tan and slice their defenders like butter. Silky smooth forehand, backhand, and how many of you felt bad for James? For those of you who are like, I don't care, he's not the Leafs goalie anymore. Your team may have won, but it was at the cost of your soul. Leafs up 1-0, 32 seconds in, hooray. And the game will end that way, right? Joseph Wool got a shutout last game, it's gonna end that way. Well, no. Wool doesn't give up a very good goal, but nobody had a very good shift. The third line is out there, and there's a little bit of disrepair in the third line in this one because Nick Ritchie is on it. He hasn't been there very long. David Kampf, injured in the last game, is playing, but Andre Kasha not playing. It's Wayne Simmons bumped up to the third line. And it's not even David Kampf out there on this one. It's Kirill Semyonov who is in the lineup because of Andre Kasha, but he doesn't do a good job getting the puck deep in the shark zone. He tries his best. The Leafs try their best, but Nick Bonino finds a way past Jake Mon 
Johnson. Yes, he gets a shot. Yes, it might have been a tad screened by TJ Brody who got down to block the shot. I don't really think so though, and that's one your goalie has to have. I didn't say Joseph Wool, I just said your goalie because your goalie has to have it. Like I've gotten questions going to wildly different ends of the spectrum. They range from has Michael Hutchinson lost his job as third goalie to has Peter Mrazek lost his job as backup goalie. But whether it's Camel, Mrazek, Wool, or Hutchinson, whoever's in net has to stop that one. So we're less than five minutes in, it's already a tied game. All right, it's gonna be one of those nights. Shortly after, the third line gets out there, and proper this time, Kempf is on the ice. Nick Ritchie does a good job entering the zone, spinning and finding David Kempf. Kempf throws it on, Wayne Simmons with the perfect tip, and Reimer's not gonna stop that one. Wayne Simmons finally gets one. He's been sniffing so much over the last, like basically all of November, as the Leafs have been good, and Wayne Simmons has not been able to put the puck in the net, he finally gets one. And speaking of the Leafs in the month of November, what they've done is they've played in a way that has made me ask on a near nightly basis, are they playing well or is the other team playing poorly? I mean, could be both, could be one driving the other. Because what do we know about Sheldon Keefe and the Toronto Maple Leafs and what, what, what did he want out of the team? You watched the Amazon documentary. That's right, even when the team was winning games last regular season, he wanted playoff style goals. This is a playoff style goal. You throw it on net, someone tips it in, hooray. Joe Pavelski says hello. And that's what the Leafs did here and that's a good thing, hooray. But is it just me or are the Sharks just soft in front of their net? They don't make the front of their net a priority, which I can't imagine has been easy on their goaltending over the last few years, or this year. Steve, that's just one goal, you can't make a sweeping generalization. All right, well, let's continue. Only other real noteworthy moment from this period, Morgan Riley blocking a shot, going down the tunnel, I gasp, he returns to the game. Now less than five minutes into the second period, this is the Leafs' top line, this is five on five. Everyone was talking about Matthews directing play, which he does during this play, but where was he? He was right in front of the net. Take a look at this. Everyone saw the same thing. Austin Matthews Matthews in front of the net, he's looking at Rasmus Sandin, telling him to send the puck over to Timothy Liljegren. But Mitch Marner was sort of the one-timer decoy, and he slides down. And it's not like the Sharks let him go or forget that he exists, but here's what happened. Timothy Liljegren puts the shot on, Her, th that's good, when you shoot you might score. Probably not from there, probably not on your shot, but look at what he's shooting into. Bing, bang, bong. Bunting, Matthews, Marner. If there's a rebound, you're Toast. If it goes this way, Bunting. If it goes dead center, Matthews. If it goes this way, Marner. They're all getting it. And again, I ask you, does this Sharks defense look like a team doing the best they can in front of their goalie? We'll see, we'll see. Oh, hey, the Sharks just took a penalty. Tell you what, why don't we take a look at the penalty kill? Maybe it's better on the penalty kill. The least first power play unit takes the ice, which is no longer a thing that makes my eye twitch, and things start to happen. Now I know the whole thing about a power play and a penalty kill is that when you're on the penalty kill, you don't have as many players as the other team. But a rebound goes into the corner, Mitch Marner goes and gets it, and he's able to pass it to John Tavares in front who gives it to William Nylander for a shot. And the reason he is able to do that, they are the white jerseys with blue trim in front of the net. White jerseys with blue trim versus black and teal. Are we all clear? Nylander stopped, but John Tavares has no problem at all hopping on the rebound because the Sharks don't do anything. Burns sort of glides somewhat towards Tavares like a shopping bag blowing in the wind. Dude's like six foot eight, 400 pounds, but he's trying to flicky with his stick and James Reimer's night is done and it's his, it's the shark's fault. The shark's fault in front of him. And all you're nothing else. No, okay, well, four goals against on 17 shots isn't fun, but I don't get to see a whole lot of San Jose Sharks hockey and they already beat the Leafs this season, remember? At home, neither team looked very good at home in this little home and home. And these four goals, especially the second, third, and fourth one for the Leafs, made me wonder, oh, okay, are the Leafs getting better at going in front of the net and scoring playoff style goals? They're certainly prioritizing it, they're trying to do it, or are the Sharks just not very good at this? Now, as of yet, the Sharks haven't made Joseph Wool's job very difficult. Heading into the third with a three goal lead, yeah, you can be pretty confident that the ice is about to tilt. But Wool, up to that point, had made 19 saves getting up towards the save total from his shutout full game. If the Leafs can just prevent the third from being high event, he should be okay, but it's kind of difficult on the road. So difficult, in fact, that there were 28 shots in the third period and 16 of them belonged to the Sharks. Leafs and Sharks are trading shots back and forth. Nothing feels too dangerous. And then with about six minutes to go, the Sharks just pour it on with this amazing 
flurry where they get at least like half a dozen shots. If you got any friends who are Leaf fans, they're gonna be talking about the save from last night if you didn't see the game. You want an idea of how good the save was? This didn't go in! Seriously! The Sharks getting desperate for a goal and actually getting kind of cheeky and creative here. They do the old smack it into the end boards, have it bounce out. The old pinball routine. Sharks forwards getting behind the Leafs defense because they're caught off guard by this play. It's whacked towards Logan Couture. That's a bad guy to have the puck to. Two Sharks forwards behind the Leafs defense because they're caught off guard. The puck gets whacked to Logan Couture. That's a bad guy to get the puck to. Shoots it! ROBBED by the blocker of Joseph Wool. And I don't know how to describe it, but even though he beat the Buffalo Sabres in a nine goal game, even though he shut out the New York Islanders, that save, that one single save made me go, okay. You can stay. A goaltender earning a fan base's trust is a tricky and fickle thing, but that save was warm cocoa. That was a hot towel on a long flight. That was the bottom of a drumstick ice cream cone. It really was a weighted blanket. That was forgetting that you have seat warmers than remembering. It was bliss! It was utter bliss! It was contentment. I don't know how to describe it. There's just something about it. Something where I go, yeah, yeah, you got a couple NHL wins. I mean, lots of goalies have a couple NHL wins. But not all goalies in their third ever NHL game can make a save like that on a player like that. Questions. Steve, please! Don't yell at me, it's 2.30 in the morning. Comment on this Simmons quote. So Wayne Simmons after the game, this is real from Luke Fox of Sportsnet. Wayne Simmons says, with all the skill on the Leafs, sometimes practices are harder than games. Well, you know who I'm pretty glad the Leafs aren't playing for the rest of the season? The Sharks. Wayne! That is, that is, I know what he meant. He was complimenting his teammates and how hard they work in practice. And that has been highlighted in the media in, uh, I think within the last week. How hard Sheldon Keefe has this team practicing and it's making them better. And if you're a Leaf fan, that quote should make you feel good. But if you're a Sharks fan or a Sharks player, I could understand why you'd be like, hey. And also consider, don't say hey, that's Wayne Simmons you're talking to! When they're leading 4-1 throughout the third period, does it really makes sense to play Riley for 9 minutes and 25 seconds and Liljegren for 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Could the team not use those opportunities to actually give their young defenders some opportunities? That's a fair question, but I don't feel like Lilligren hasn't gotten any opportunities and he's played well. Also, you're trying to win a game and you put Morgan Riley out there because you're trying to win a game. And when you get more points, it's good. It's always good. It's not a bad idea what you're suggesting, but I would start by trying that at home. Also, how good do the Leafs gotta be feeling right now? Right now they got to be rolling just don't mess with it keep doing what you're doing and lastly hey uh you got some room on that big leafs nation fan base signed pained depressed hurt mentally frustrated almost given up canucks fan i think it has come to this this season listen you can hop on whatever bandwagon you want. As a Leafs fan, let me tell you, the gong show seasons are sometimes the most fun to cover. And I assume watch because that's when my channel started blowing up. It started blowing up because of the 2013 season and hey, the Leafs made the playoffs and this guy's happy about it. Isn't it fun watching him be happy? And then the numbers went up even higher because they were like, they choked and he's in pain. Let's watch his pain. You're a Canucks fan for goodness sake. You've waited this long, you might as well ride it out. And lastly, because I got this from a few people, why does Barabanov all of a sudden look like a superstar? Oh wait, it's because he was playing against the Leafs, right? Is that why? Honestly, I, I liked Barabanov in Toronto, I did. It's just, he didn't always get in the lineup and he wasn't really a bottom six player. I kind of look at Kirill Semyonov and wonder with him because he looks fine. He looks like a good player. He was a point a game player in the American Hockey League. But is he a fourth line center? It's a type, right? Barabanov, I think, in a small addition with the Leafs, looked good in the top six. And of course he looks good with the Sharks. He's getting a bigger opportunity. If the same thing happened to Semyonov, I'm sure the same would happen. The Leafs have good players. We know that. But it's about fits. And Dubas did right by Barabanov by finding him a better fit. So for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. We got a brand new Steve Dangle podcast that's up. SDPN.ca and all of that. And also, no watch a Leaf game with Steve Dangle this Saturday on account of they don't play this Saturday. Just remember that.